Good morning. Good morning. Please join in singing number 568 in the hymnal, Christ for the World We Sing. your neighbors a good morning. Our next song is going to be number 2208 in the faith we sing, Guide My Feet.
please join me in affirming our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We are glad that you decided to come and worship at Archdale UMC this morning. Uh, there are several announcements in the bulletin and otherwise that I would like to go through. Um, first off, there is going to be a fundraiser at Fairfield United Methodist on July 14th for the Bova family. Um, they are asking uh, Archdale that we uh, might be able to provide some desserts for the event. It's going to be a supper with desserts. Um, they're also asking for some volunteers for the event. Um, there will be more information following up very soon, but that event is going to be July 14th at Fairfield UMC. There are details of several youth events in the bulletin. Um, there's details about Spiritus coming up. The youth pool party is this evening. Uh, vacation Bible School is coming up. There will be a Vacation Bible School meeting this evening at 4 p.m. Please attend. Um, they are looking for donations and volunteers. If, the, if uh, the Father is calling you, please respond. The George Elder Sunday School will be serving the Neighborhood Cafe this week. Uh, they are always looking for desserts for this event. Um, if you are able to help provide for that, please deliver them to the church earlier in the day on Thursday. There will be a Red Cross blood drive on Tuesday, June 26th from 2 to 6.30 in the fellowship hall. They are in desperate need of all types of blood. If you are able to donate, please sign up. Carol will be up here after service with a sign-up sheet if you would like to come up and sign up after service. The columbarium, the brick order, um, all orders need to be in July 1st, so they will have enough time to engrave the bricks. The order will be sent into the company on July 2nd. Um, and for all of you parents who are wondering what to do with your teens this summer, the Grub YMCA is offering free teen memberships. Um, there's information in the bulletin about that. Our call to prayer is 454 in the hymnal, Open My Eyes That I May See. It's going to be the refrain only. And our prayer response is going to be 2040 in the faith we sing, Awesome God. Let's go to prayer. Gracious God, we declare with our best intentions to know and do your will. During our fleeting moments of reflection, 
we find that we have only done our own will. In this place and time, we recommit to patiently listening for your still small voice through the noise of our busy lives. Holy Spirit, give us the wisdom to discern your voice of grace and truth. Give us the characteristics and disposition to embody the fruit of the Spirit in all our words and actions. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from every evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Everlasting God, you love all people, especially those who are poor and vulnerable. You have demonstrated your great compassion in scripture and history. Thank you for calling us to actively show compassion and uphold justice as members of the Church of Christ. We are grateful for the opportunity to extend your love through the ministries of our congregation. Use our gifts and offerings to help our neighbors who are in need of tangible goods and your spirit's peace. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
Before you sit down, will you turn to your neighbor and say, God loves you and so do I. Good morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you. It's good to be back with you for another year, and I, I thank you for this awesome privilege and, and uh, looking forward to what God has for all of us. So thank you for being here. I will remind you, down the center of the aisles are our pew pads. Please pass those down to your neighbor so that they may um, sign in. Whether you are a member or a guest, you are a vital part of this congregation this morning. And we would like to know that um, who you are and that you are here. So thank you for doing that. This morning we are in, again, the Gospel of St. Mark. We are in the sixth chapter. Next week we begin a sermon series on the Lord's Prayer, breaking that down. What do what are the various parts in it mean? We say it every Sunday, but what does it mean? So many times I get in the habit of saying it and saying it, but I forget what these words mean and, and the transformation when Jesus said, no, no, this is how you pray and, and what that means for our spiritual lives, our discipleship lives out in the world, how we treat one another, everything. Uh, the Lord's Prayer sums it up so well uh, in prayer and how we are to pray. So we will begin about a six or seven week uh, series or so on the Lord's Prayer, and I hope that you can come and be a part of that. But this week we are in, in the Gospel of St. Mark. We're kind of going to skip over the first uh, six verses of it, or 1 through 6a, where Jesus goes back into his hometown again, and, and they kind of pick at him. They say, wait a minute, aren't you Mary and Joseph's child, and the, you know, the brothers and sisters, and you were in a class, so if you were poor, that's how you were going to be as a child, and, and you were uh, stigmatized. That, that's where you were. And so they go, yeah, but you're them. Why are you talking like this? And so here's where Jesus comes to us today after they chastised him with these words. Will you bow in prayer before we hear God's holy word? Gracious God. We thank you for the scriptures that we have this morning. May we open the door so that you may come in and fill the very depths of our souls with transformation as we hear your word. New avenues to go and serve as we hear your holy word. And as we draw closer to you by hearing your holy word. May the words I use be yours and yours alone and bring only honor and glory to you. For it is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit that we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Hear now these words. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. Then they went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The year was around 1999. I began a journey that I didn't realize 
the consequences of that journey, or I should say, what would be in store for my life in the future. A couple of pastors who have become mentors and wonderful friends of mine asked me to go to the Mission Response Center near Mooresville and Terrell, right across the, the street on 150 from the coal plant of, of Duke Power, to go there and to begin loading containers heading to Armenia. We had started this journey with the Armenians in 1993, and it was a project that had begun. Our fellow sisters and brothers in Christ, the oldest Christian nation in the world, we began that journey of sending supplies over after the Soviet Union had dissolved and, and most of those countries were just in utter poverty. I mean utter poverty. Then the war with Azerbaijan broke out and, and food and power. At times they were going only two days in the city of Yerevan, their capital of 1.5 million people power for just an hour or two per day. That's the economic situation was not improving. Four Armenians came over to ask us to help and so the project began and in 99 or so Mark Barden and Alec Albert and Cecil Donahue became a part of my life, asking me to go and to start this wonderful project or to be a part of it. And I began to load container ships that were heading over, supplies that you generous Methodists throughout the conference gave, pants and shirts and coats and socks and things that they needed, food at the time. We can't take food now over or ship it uh, due to regulations, but we could back then. We were the lifeblood of so many communities back then, and unfortunately, we are still that lifeblood. I will head over in October to celebrate that 25th anniversary celebration of what loyal people called United Methodist servants have done for our fellow sisters and brothers. In 2001, we began to have a trip talk about a trip, it would be three or four from each conference would go over and look again at the project and were there things that we could do again. And they actually came up to me and said, would you like to go? Now, I had never been overseas on a trip in my life, just one or two uh, trips with businesses, uh, my, with the government that I had taken. And now I was going to go overseas. And if you remember what happened in 2001 on 9-11 and we were beginning the planning phase of the trip that would take place in April, we decided as a group that we were not going to let that stop us and that we were going to go over to Armenia. Now here I am on my first trip. I've never been overseas, much less on a mission trip. I've never really been to a place that was so hurting for just the essentials of life and seeing and looking. And I wondered, is this really, God, what you're calling me to do? Are you sure that I can go and see with your eyes and hear and, and I can do what you're asking me to do? And so we went. In April, and off we went from Charlotte to London, and London down to Armenia, to Yerevan, through Georgia, through Tbilisi. When I arrived, it was interesting. I'd never been overseas to Europe anywhere, South America, Asia. This was my first foreign trip to see a culture that was different than what I was used to hearing their stories for several of them did speak English and listen. Heading to places like Stittat where an earthquake had happened and 
was my first time seeing tombstones with people's pictures on them. That's how they did. Watching a, a family of grandparents and then a parent and then a rose that was bent. The mother was beside this rose. She was pregnant. That was the signal of the rose, the baby that died in the earthquake as buildings collapsed. And so many died. We then went over to where we are now, Bairdzor, which is our hub today, as, as the parts of that, the parts of Armenia that we once were in are, are more stable. But this place of Bairdzor, it, it, it was a Bairdzor was a place that had suffered so much, so much. Stalin gave it away as part of trying to get Turkey to go into the Soviet Union. And they were Armenian, and they had gone back to being Armenian at the breakup. And so when I went to Berdzor, one of the first houses I went to was this interesting place. It was a home, a home with just a tin roof on it, and, and the doors were, it, it was hard. It was a family, and, and as I drove up and I looked at that house, there it is. Um, I didn't know what to say or do. It's a house that had the tin roof, as you can see, but it was open, so in the winter, their, their winters in Berdzor are colder than Boone's. Their summers are a little warmer. Here it was in April, and it was starting to warm up. Two doors in the house, one that went into the kitchen. I think Laura has that picture as well. You can see a bed or something where the food is. It's a floor with cement on the right and on dirt on the left. And then the second room was where the bedrooms were, the beds, and there was a table in the middle of it, and the family was there. And I'll show you a picture of the family that we met. The father and mother are on your right. The daughter is beside the mother. She has an older brother who was in the service. They have a two-year mandatory service for all males. The serviceman was married. That's his wife in the purple. She was thin, very thin. You could see her bones. And that's her baby. That's her baby, the son of this family and their daughter-in-law, and now their grandchild. This mother you see in the orange, she came out and started crying. She was crying because she had no Radical hospitality in the Armenian culture says if friends come in, then you have to provide what? Food. They didn't have any food. So she began to cry. We assured her was okay. She had Armenian coffee. If you've ever had anything from over in that neck of the woods and you take their coffee and it pours like syrup <laughs> and you take a little cup like this and let me tell you if you were asleep when you went in you're awake when you leave. And so Nora, our in-country coordinator, and who speaks English very, very well, and is our director who comes over back and forth, 
she interpreted and said, the coffee will be fine. And so she went in and made it for us. Talking with them and asking questions and Nara interpreting for us, we began to see why God sent us over there for those two weeks. As we learned the journey that this family and others had been on, when we began to see how God would use us, how God would use us to bring hope to families far away, and yet they would bring hope to us in how they lived their lives with nothing. The clothes that we had sent over Two shirts and two pair of pants. How they lived and and how they survived. and, And with all that was going back in 2002. How they still had some type of hope that something would be better in the future. On this day and in this trip, I wondered, God, how are you going to use me? I'd never been in mission work as a lay person, really. And yet, for some strange reason, God had brought me to this place. Little did I know that I would be put on the board shortly after this trip and stay on the board and then become the chair of the board of Project Agape, the joint venture between our conference, the Western that heads from Burlington or Graham, uh, Burlington, Gibsonville, I should say, to the mountains, and the North Carolina conference, which is Burlington to the coast. All of you, North Carolina Methodists, were the ones who were bringing hope to people hurting. And yet God placed me as a chair, a chair, that I didn't know if I could handle. You see, today, my sisters and brothers, in our scripture lesson, Jesus gathers the twelve around them and he sends them out into the world. He sends them out to the communities around them, I should say, initially, and then at the end of his ministry here on earth, when before he ascended, he sends them out to the world. But on this day, he gathers the twelve and he sends them off in pairs and he says, go out into the villages around us. I'm sending you out. You see, you were part of the plan. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to force it on you. I'm not going to be the magic wand who puts in everyone's heart about God and how God's intended plan was. No, when... When you were made in God's image, when we made you, we made you like us so that you could choose for yourself. Did you want to do good? Or did you only want to serve yourself? Did you want to work inside of a a committee, a team, a church, a group of people? Or did you want to go out and do it your way and how you do it? Did you want to give up everything you have for the kingdom as I am willing to give up everything for you, including my life? Are you willing to give up your time to go and serve? Are you willing to give 10% or more? If you remember AJ's conversation about he and his wife and how they've progressed even past 10% plus giving sacrificially, are you willing to give it all up for Christ? Are you willing to serve and be a witness out in the world? And so he sent those those motley 12 men out into the world, the 12 men that kept trying to grab his collar and tell him how to run the kingdom, those 12 men that kept pushing back on him and, and, and not really understanding who he was and believing it, those 12 men who, who were so focused on what, they thought 
God's one and only Son, the Messiah, should look like and do and, and, and how they viewed it that He was going to bring angels from heaven and massive armies and and they would annihilate the world and, and they could all sit up on the throne with Jesus and that's how it would be. And yet Jesus is going, no, that's not how it is. In fact, I'm not going to be do that. I'm going down a road and that road's going to lead to where the religious leaders in the church and the pastors and bishops and DSs and, and, and every other form and church lay leaders they're all going to put me on a cross and kill me. And if you're going to be my disciple, guess what? You're going down the same road. It's not going to be a picnic. It's not going to be how some evangelist and others say, if you follow Jesus, your life will be easy. You'll be healed of every infirmity you have. You'll have more money. If you don't have any money, it's because you're not praying hard enough. No, it's not going to be that way. It's going to be hard. And so he sent them out two by twos. And on this first time out, they took no real provisions with them. Just the clothes that they had on their back. They were not taking extras. They were not taking money. If you go somewhere, stay with them until you leave. Don't go out and try to find better accommodations. When you go in the town, if someone welcomes you into their home and they're the poorest person in the town, you stay with them with joy and honor. That's why you don't take money so you can go out and find better places. You take their hospitality, you welcome them. The family you just saw, she brought all that she had to the table. Most of the people in Berzor make the equivalent of 60 U.S. dollars per month or less. Think about that. That's what, $720 equivalent U.S. dollars a year, if my math is correct. That's what most, the most they make. There are many families that make less than that. On the subsequent building teams that I have been on and others, when we walk in a family's house, it's amazing what they have, or if they don't, they'll send a child, or the mom will walk off a minute, go to the store, purchase something. It may just be fruit or some small cookies. But that sense of hospitality and gratitude, it's just mind-boggling. You see, now I know why God sent me. Even though I don't always let it seep in and affect me here in America, I see why God sent me over there. To be a witness and to allow them to witness to me in their Christian faith of how they survived when the Soviet Union would not let them worship in the way that they worship now. I saw how God took a a preacherologist, as many of you are calling me now, a meteorologist who became the preacher, to see another part of the world, to open my eyes so that when I came back here, I began to see more clearly God's world here. People who were hurting, people who were hungry, people who were living in tents, not judging them, not throwing stones, not condemning them but seeing them as God's children. Not a, I can't understand their life until I sit and talk with them. Just like I could not understand the Armenians until I sat and talked with them and their journey. Even though there was a language barrier there, and I still only speak about eight Armenian words, and that's on a good day, but sitting with them, watching their facial expressions, hearing Nora's interpretation, I began to understand the people, not only of Yerevan, the capital, that still has about one and a half million people, but the people out and away from Yerevan where there are no showers like we have or Yerevan has. 
the bathrooms that can be the old way your grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents used to go. You remember the little building outside of the house. God began to point me in another direction of, of what I could accomplish as, as low as my feelings for myself were and what I could and couldn't accomplish and what I may be able to do. God kept pushing me down a road and saying, I need you to go and be a witness. I need you to go and serve and in being that servant you will be a witness. And today, my sisters and brothers, none of us in this room is immune from, from that calling of the original 12. We are those 12, those 24, those 36, that 72, that 144, that 288. Can you tell I did take some math? He's sending us all out into the world to share our faith, to be servants, to go out. And, and yes, we're going to be petrified. But Alan, I don't think I can do that. But Alan, I don't know how I'm going to do it. And I can tell you, you're not going to be able to do it on your own. You're not going to be able to do it if you're thinking of yourself and who you were in the past. You'll never be able to do it, just like I won't. To wherever God's leading me tomorrow and the next day. And when I go back in October, I'm going to stay a couple or so extra weeks catch up on some vacation, but also to be there with Nora and go through the day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day things that she does as she helps the people in Baird's or in the surrounding communities so that I can get even a better look and just talk with some of the people. I hope I can do that with Nora to hear their journey of faith. For you see, that's what the disciples did when they went. How would they have known that someone need healing or just needed holy water and the symbol of the cross or however they did it back then. They wouldn't have known unless they went into the villages. Notice what Jesus did. It wasn't to rush by. It was to go in and sit and talk and to begin to understand who the people were. Even if their lifestyle wasn't yours. But to go and do and be. And so today, my sisters and brothers, whether you are a teenager, whether you were in your 20s, whether you are in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, God is calling you and me to go two by two, three, three, four, however, to go out into the world and to share that. You see, the thing of Scripture, it wasn't just written for them, it was written for us. And so Jesus is here standing with us today and He's saying, okay, I'm sending you out. Out into a world that you may not understand, but that's okay, I'm going to walk with you. Because they don't understand you either. And so together you can begin to understand each other. Go out. He's sending us out as, as a motley crew. As, as when you look at all of us and you think of the gifts that we kind of have now. We may not be the best group in the world that, that, that Fortune 500 com companies would use to go out. But yet it is the group that God is calling to go out because he knows who you can be and who I can be who we can be. And despite our imperfections and pushing Jesus away at times and being mad at Jesus at times that the world isn't going the way we want it, He keeps coming back to us and He says, by the way, come to me. Today I'm going to send you out into the world. Two by two. In pairs. Threes and fours. To go out into the world. All of you have gifts that I'm going to give you that you didn't think you had, but I'm going to give you, and you're going to make it. Are you going to be perfect in it? No, there was only one perfect missionary and evangelist, and that's the one on the cross. But I'm going to send you out as imperfect, and as the old 
daytime story I used to watch every evening. A bunch of knotheads. I'm going to send you out. Knuckleheads. I'm going to send you out. Because I know who you can be. And I love you more than anything in the world. But you're needed out. You need to love one another. So that the world can see that love. And then you need to take it out. And go and do and be. I don't know what God has in store for me with Project Agape or any other ministry with you in the community here and in the world because Jesus clearly said in the first chapter of Acts, I'm sending you out to Jerusalem, Judea, where it was next, Samaria, the enemy, and the world. It wasn't or, it wasn't Jerusalem first. Then Judea second. It was all four of them simultaneously at the same time. We're being sent. Isn't it amazing that the one who created us, who knows every hair on your body, knows every quirk and little tidbit about you, and then some. The one who wanted you in the world to work with him, brought you in, knows how big a motley crew we are. It's the one who actually comes up in person and says, Alan, I need you to go with Archdale United Methodist Street down the church. Alan, I need you to go with Archdale United Methodist Church over a few streets. Alan. I need you with Archdale United Methodist Church to go to Armenia. Alan, Bob, Ralph, Jane, whatever your names are. I need you to come with me and I'm going to send you out. I'm going to send you out. Today, my brothers and sisters, we are being called. We can push back. We can say, I'm not gifted. We can say, I don't have any things. And when we go out, we can try to make other people just like us, judge them just like everyone else judges them. We can do everything else. Or we can see them as God sees them. As I saw that family in 2002, as my sisters and brothers, as God's holy family, who was willing to give far more back to me than I was prepared at that time to give back to them. It's the good news of the gospel. That we're a bunch of misfits. Correct? Isn't that Rudolph? just a bunch of misfits and yet God has chosen us by name to go out in pairs and threes and fours to be his witness in the world will you pray with me gracious God you are sending us out to bring healing and hope and love and and fresh starts and and to also be ministered to as we go out into the world to, to minister to it. And so many times the world gives back to us so much more than we deserve and that we're giving back. Help us, Lord, to understand that you are calling us, every one of us, to be a part of the ministry you need as we go out to serve the world and to bring hope and love and, and to bring healing, yes, just as those disciples were sent out to bring healing through prayer and touch and listening and, and so much more. May we be in a, in a time of discernment as, as individuals in your church and what you were calling us to do and to be as we go out to share the gospel and invite people to come and to hear the good news that to some is a burden 
But I pray to us, Lord, is joy as we are sent out. Thank you, Almighty God, for all that you have done. Your patience with us as we have shut the door and said, No, I don't want to make the time for you. I'm not going to give back to you. And yet you keep knocking and coming in to take our hand and to walk with us in this journey of service to the world and witness. Guide us, Almighty God. And may we trust you that you will equip us to do what you need us to do. For it is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit that we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 2130 in the faith we sing or it will be on the screen. It is the summons, it's our call by Christ to be his disciples out in the world. Please stand and let's sing with joy. song is doing it's Jesus doing what talking to us that's why I love this song thank you for choosing it If you'll take the hand of someone around you, if there is, if there's not, that's okay. Almighty God, you have called us to go. To go out into the world, to trust you, to take your hand and to follow you. That we may share with this world that is hurting and trying to find hope and love and, and acceptance in so many places other than the only true way that that will ever happen, and that is in you. So me, so may we, O oh Lord, allow you to come in us, and may we go in you, that we will be for the world together, 
the body of Christ called Archdale United Methodist, but beyond that, Christ Holy Church at Archdale United Methodist. That we may go out into the world to serve the world with you, in you, for you, and you alone. For it is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit that we pray. And all of the sisters and brothers of Christ said, Amen. Go and serve in peace. Remember, Carol has the uh, sheet if you want to sign up for giving blood. Thank you. Love you all.